in which the last dangling threads of our story play out in the aftermath of Anna's death. Chapter 6 As he had not known when he would be able to leave Moscow, Sergei Ivanovich had not telegraphed his brother nor they'd be met. Levin was not at home when Kantavasov and Sergei Ivanovich, dusty as moors in a little tarantas, hired at the station, drove up to the porch of the Pokrovsko house at around noon. Kitty, who was sitting on the balcony with her father and sister, recognized her brother-in-law and ran down to meet him. Shame on you for not letting us know, she said, giving Sergei Ivanovich her hand and offering her forehead. We had a wonderful ride, and without bothering you, replied Sergei Ivanovich. I'm so dusty I'm afraid to touch you. I've been so busy I didn't know when I'd be able to get away. And you, as ever, he said, smiling, are enjoying quiet happiness far from all the currents in your quiet backwater. And our friend Fyodor Vasilievich also finally decided to come. And I'm no negro. I'll wash and look like a human being, Katavasov said with his usual jocularity, giving his hand and smiling, his gleaming teeth especially on account of his black face. Kostya will be very glad. He's gone out to the farmstead. He ought to be home any time now. Still busy with the farming. Precisely in backwaters said Gadavasov. And we in the city see nothing but the Serbian war. Well, what's my friend's attitude? Surely something unlike people's. No, not really. The same as everyone else's, Kitty replied, looking with some embarrassment at Sergei Ivanovich. I'll send for him, then. And we have Papa with us. He came from abroad not long ago and giving orders that Levine be sent for and that her dust-covered guests be taken to wash, one to the study, the other to Dolly's former room, and that lunch be prepared for them. She ran out to the balcony, exercising her right to move quickly, which she had been deprived of during her pregnancy. It's Sergei Ivanovich and Katavasov, a professor, she said. Ah, it's hard in such heat, said the prince. No, Papa, he's very nice. And Kostya loves him very much, said Kitty, smiling as if persuading him of something, having noticed the mocking look on her father's face. Oh, don't mind me. Go to them, darling, Kitty said to her sister, and entertain them. They met Steve at the station. He's well. And I'll run to meet you. Poor thing, I haven't nursed him since breakfast. He's awake now and must be crying and feeling the influx of milk, she went with quick steps to the nursery. Indeed, it was not that she guessed. Her bond with the baby had not been broken yet, but she knew for certain by the influx of milk in her that he needed to be fed. She knew he was crying even before she came near the nursery, and he was indeed crying. She heard his voice and quickened her pace, but the quicker she walked, the louder he cried. It was a good, healthy, but hungry and impatient voice. "'Has he been crying long, Nanny?' Kitty said hurriedly, sitting down in the chair and preparing to nurse him. "'Give him to me quickly.' "'Ah, oh, Nanny, how tiresome you are. No, you can tie the bonnet afterwards.' The baby was in a fit of greedy screaming. "'That's not the way, dearie,' said Agafya Mikhailovna, who was almost always there in the nursery. "'He must be tidied up properly. Cuckoo!' She sang over him, paying no attention to the mother. 
The nanny brought the baby to the mother. Agafya Mikhailovna followed them, her face melting with tenderness. He knows me, he does. It's God's truth, dearest Katerina Alexandrovna. He recognized me. Agafya Mikhailovna outshouted the baby. But Kitty did not listen to what she said. Her impatience kept growing along with the baby's. Owing to that impatience, it was a long time before matters were put right. The baby grabbed the wrong thing and got angry. Finally, after a desperate, gasping cry and empty sucking, matters were put right. Mother and baby simultaneously felt pacified, and both quieted down. He's all sweaty, too, poor little thing, Kitty said in a whisper, feeling the baby. Why do you think he recognizes you? She added, looking sideways at the baby's eyes, which seemed to her to be peeping slyly from under the pulled-down bonnet, and his regularly puffing cheeks, and his hand with its red palm, with which he was making circular movements. It can't be. If he recognized anyone, it would be me, Kitty said in response to Gafi Megalovna's observation, and she smiled. She smiled because... Though she had said he could not recognize anything, she knew in her heart that he not only recognized Agafya Mikhailovna, but knew and understood everything, knew and understood much else that no one knew, and which she, his mother, had herself learned and begun to understand only thanks to him. For Agafya Mikhailovna, for his nanny, for his grandfather, even for his father, Mitya was a living being who required only material care. But for his mother, he had long been a moral creature with whom she had a whole history of spiritual relations. Once he wakes up, God willing, you'll see for yourself. I do like this, and he just beams all over the darling. Beams all over, like a sunny day, said Agafya Mikhailovna. Well, all right. We'll see you then, whispered Kitty. Go now. He's falling asleep. If you enjoy this format, please leave a like and subscribe and return tomorrow for the next chapter.